Hi, Zyzo USG20 unboxing. Okay, so the firewall arrives in a nice box like this. Let's see what's inside. Okay. Inside we can find the firewall itself. Okay. Open it. Okay, it's like this. Front. Okay, power light, system light, USB light, one and uh, four uh, LAN ports from the back. It's, it's pretty light and unfortunately you can't rack mount it, so you have to put it on a shelf or uh, there is some space you can mount it on a wall. Okay, so what else we've got here? Too much really. Power supply here with a UK uh, plug, console cable, okay, because this device can be managed from the from the CLI network cable, warranty card. And quick start guide just showing you how to connect this firewall that's it okay so let me connect the firewall for you and see what lights we will get and make sure that it works okay Okay, so we can see a power light, system light, and uh, now I will take a laptop and connect it, connect it to one of the LAN ports. Uh, a DHCP server, server should be enabled, so I hope we will get an IP address. The default IP address is 192.168.1.1. Username is admin, password is 1234. So, yeah, according to this manual, we should be able to connect our PC and I hope I will get an IP address from 192.168.1 range. Okay, a closer view at the firewall. Now, I am connected to my Zyzer USG20. Uh, first First of all, let's try and bring the command prompt and double check that we received an IP address. Okay, it looks good. So I can see 192.168.1.33, default gateway. Yeah, let's try and ping 192.168.1.1. Okay, looks good. 192.168.1.1. Okay, I know there is no certificate. Okay, it is a good sign. Admin, one, two, three, four. Okay, it's, uh, I'm asked to change the password straight away, so let's do that. Lie. Okay, login again with my new password. Okay, and here is an installation setup wizard, so uh, let's do that. Okay, so let's click next. Now, the encapsulation, so in my situation I will connect it to my existing firewall, uh, so it will be Ethernet, but you could use PPPoE, PPTP. There is no modem, so you have to connect it to a modem. So what I will do now, I will connect this firewall to my existing uh, to 
my existing router, so using the one port and we leave it in auto so it should receive an IP address from my router, okay, a pseudo public IP address, okay? Okay, it's connected, so let's click next. Okay, and see how it goes. Hmm. Not good, really. Expected more than that. IP address. Let's go back, try again. Hmm. Okay, let me verify the cable. Yeah, the cable is connected, so uh, not sure why. Uh, let's skip it for now and go to this one section and try it again. See what's going on over there. So as you can see, one port is connected, P1 is connected, and I should receive an IP address. And that's my laptop, okay? So, what we have to do is to go to the configuration screen. One, one, okay, here we are. 172.16.1.22. It took a while, no, not sure why it didn't show it on the main screen. And, we should be able to browse the internet now. Okay, so here we are, we can browse the internet, okay? So as you can see, it's very easy to make it work. All you have to do is assign an IP address or change an IP address. Let me show it to you again. Okay, so if you want to adjust or change these settings, we go to configuration, Ethernet. And here is your one one. Okay, you can edit it. And eventually here we are. Okay, so that's what you're interested in. So if you uh, if you have a fixed IP address, that's what you do here, and you specify a static IP address, or you allow your firewall to get an IP address automatically. Okay, and that is all you have to do for now. One thing that I want to show you is this screen. It allows you to connect and create a profile for your 3G backup connection. Okay, so that is a great feature of this firewall. Let me go to dashboard. Okay, so that's what what you have here, a USB light, okay, and uh, you can connect a 3G uh, USB dump. Okay, so let's take a quick look at uh, some other options that are available. So that is your dashboard. Uh, it will show you CPU, memory and flash usage, system status, okay, interface summary, okay, so this is a really important value, okay, so make sure that is full duplex and at least 100. I had some uh, issues with it when I uh, had set up a USG 50 some time ago. So make sure that you double check that. Uh, okay, so that is your dashboard. Then a really nice option is your monitor that allows you to see what's going on on your firewall in details. Okay, uh, so interface status. Okay, so that's the same screen but with some more information. Traffic statistics, session monitor, dynamic DNS if you want to use this feature and uh, you've got the public IP address. Okay, and some other options for VPN. Uh, if you buy a license, you will get uh, some uh, information here as well. Okay, and the main configuration screen is here. So let's start with licensing, so you can register your uh, USG online and uh, on some of them you can get a trial version of uh, anti antivirus, uh, spam filter and so on, it all depends what firewall you're on, not everything might be supported so you have to check that. The next section is network, 
uh, you can create some static routes, zones, so this is a screen where you can create an additional zone, for instance if you have more than one DMZ or you want to create a separate zone for, I don't know, L2TP VPN, that's what I did some time ago. You can set up dynamic DNS, NAT, okay, and especially policy NAT, policy route, okay, it's a policy based routing when you can uh, decide what, how and where this firewall should go, okay, some more advanced options, okay, VPNs, this firewall does support IPsec VPNs, L2TP IPsec, and SSL VPN, okay? You can monitor your bandwidth here, enable and check some uh, options here, ADP, that's basic uh, TCP UDP uh, checkup, so let me show it to you, you go to profile, and here is the a default profile for it and it will show you what what's going to be uh, checked yeah so for instance it will check for ICMP suite some basic uh, security uh, features to make sure that if a TCP message arrives or if something is not in a way it should I will try and recognize that and uh, stop uh, this message okay you can create some objects, okay, so you can create users, addresses and so on, so let me show you users screen. So here if you if you have more than one user you can add a new one. And uh, this user can belong to the following groups. It can be a user, okay, admin, limited admin, guest and some other groups here, okay. So if you want to have uh, a new admin you have to click here, okay and of course specify a username and password. What I, what I uh, could not find on the screen was to, uh, was to disable an account, okay, not sure if it's, uh, if it's available somewhere, but we've got groups and settings, okay. System. Okay, you can specify a host name, date. Another thing I want to show you is it's worth to enable SSH. As you can see, it's enabled, but it's enabled from all zones to all addresses. Okay, so sometimes it's good to lock it down. Uh, Telnet is disabled by default, but I recommend you should enable it on your LAN just in case something goes wrong with your certificate and you cannot SSH and HTTPS to it. Okay, and the last screen I want to show you is uh, logs and reports. Okay, so uh, log settings, so you can check and decide what should be logged. Okay, and then a basic, lo a basic log viewer is uh, in your monitor section when you have your log and you can see what's, uh, what's going on. Okay, so as you can see some uh, some messages were already blocked. Okay, the last screen is maintenance. Okay, file manager. What you can do here is back up your configuration. That's your configuration startup config. You can download it to your PC. Okay. Or what I what I really like is copy, okay? And you can copy it and save it on the firewall itself, okay? So uh, it is much easier to uh, apply this configuration later on, okay? If you if you make a mistake, here is uh, a tab that allows you to upgrade your firmware. So you can go to Zizo uh, website and verify that you're running the latest code. Some basic diagnostics tools, okay, you can capture some packets, you can reboot and shut down your firewall, okay. This is a firewall that should be shut down, you should not just unplug a cable. Uh, to be honest, I, I've done it uh, three or four times with uh, uh, 
USG50 and it did survive but uh, it's recommended that you should go and shut down this firewall okay some uh, routers and firewalls do not require that like a Cisco ESA you can just unplug it and it's okay uh, Zizu say you should always go to this screen and uh, shut down your firewall okay uh, the last thing I want to show you is CLI okay because that's what I said you can connect to your uh, firewall you can tell it you can SSH to your firewall okay so uh, you can type some commands I'm not sure if it's working but let's see if I can uh, if I can SSH to it okay because SSH was enabled so I should be able to SSH to it I'm sure if I've got party somewhere let me download party and I will try and SSH to it <laughs> okay so party is here, 192.168.1.1 Try and SSH Okay, that's good Admin Password Okay, and here we are Okay, and here is your uh, CLI You can do all show commands You can you can set up your uh, firewall And that is when you do show running config It will show you your uh, running configuration Okay, so this is a good uh, tool if you want to uh, set it up using a command line interface. Thank you very much.